Inspector Wayne Hoffman is taking us into a world the public rarely sees. This is the New South Wales Police Ballistic Forensic Unit. It's where most illegal firearms recovered in New South Wales end up. We're going to uh, do a bit of a firepower demonstration and show you the different types of weapons. What you see before you, Terry, is a representative sample of what uh, has been taken off criminals and criminal gangs. Which do you think is the weapon of choice for the crooks out there on the street? The weapon of choice for uh, the criminals, if they can get their hands on it, is the uh, type of weapon here is the uh, self-loading pistol, automatic pistol, possibly because of the fact that it can be concealed about the body and it can fire as fast as you pull the trigger. This is an Uzi submachine gun. Yes, Terry, this started off life as an Uzi self-loading pistol, and uh, the criminal, in this case, has converted this uh, self-loading pistol into a fully automatic submachine gun, and the effects of this are pretty devastating uh, as fired on fully automatic. What we have here is a 12-gauge under and over, and I call it an under and over because it has two barrels, and one is over and under. What the criminal tends to do is uh, shorten the firearm, to make it concealable again in a bag or uh, against the body and they've cut the buttstock off and they have cut the barrels and shortened it down to something that suits their purpose a bit better. And that doesn't affect its, its, its devastating capability at short range. What's especially disturbing is that some weapons normally used in war zones and they're making their way onto our streets. An Aruga Mini 14 with a customised stock that fires a full 223 calibre round. And what the criminal here has done is removed the wooden stock off the firearm and put a customised folding stock. And that fires a military calibre? Yes, 223 is a common military calibre round. The rise in illegal weapons is alarming, but the good news is that science is helping police fight back. It's the science of tracing a firearm's DNA. What we have here is a 45 auto self-loading pistol that's uh, been recovered by detectives from criminals off the street. It's uh, been fingerprinted in DNA and it's coming here for a full forensic examination. It's going to be discharged into the bullet water recovery tank so we, re we recover the uh, bullets and the cartridge cases. A loaded pistol and a tank of water. This is the first step in connecting seized weapons with an actual crime. Hey, firing. It's fired at an angle and basically the water will strip the velocity off the bullet, slow it down enough so that when it touches the bottom it won't damage the bullet and we can then uh, recover it straight away. So what happens to the bullet then? Well, as you can see, Terry, here we have some cartridge cases and bullets. The bullets have just been recovered out of the water and with these now they'll all be taken up to the integrated ballistics identification system in our laboratory. The Ballistics Identification System, known as IBIS, is the latest weapon in the police armoury. It matches unique firearm and bullet markings through laser technology. A cold hit is recorded when a specific crime, sometimes years old, is connected with a seized firearm or projectile. What Elton, the scientific officer, is doing here is then having a look at all the images. He runs the, uh, the match point analysis. Elton has selected certain prime candidates of images and he's looking at them and looking at the individual markings. We've linked well over one and a half thousand crimes with the system that we would have not known about if it wasn't for this IBIS. So how many projectiles and cartridge case do you actually have on the system recorded? We've got uh, 28,000 fired cartridge cases and over 10,000 bullets. So we're approaching uh, just over 40,000 firearm-related images of cartridge cases and bullets. That's huge. And, and that, to me, is also like a, a DNA system in the ballistics. Well, yes, it's very similar for fingerprints, the fingerprint technology, and uh, DNA for guns. So this system is really helping to combat gun crime? We've got the most state-of-the-art, most advanced IBIS system in the world, and it's proving its results and locking up crooks 